Hello dear students welcome back to Chinmoy's biology channel so today we are here with a new lesson that is suspension and colloidal solution this is actually the second part of is matter around us pure that part second part only we are continuing today in the first part we have spoken about mixture and different types of solution with different activities so without further delay let's get started with today's episode of suspension and colloidal solution so today we will be studying about suspension and colloidal solution so if you want to know more regarding this lesson you need to stay tuned subscribe to my channel because there are yet more topics to come in this lesson because in the next lesson uh, next video i'll be uploading with the physical and chemical changes which is the last part of this lesson and compound and types of pure substances i'll be teaching so subscribe to my channel stay tuned stay updated with all the videos in this lesson as per your curriculum whatever i am posting will be updated if you are subscribing to my channel so let's get started with today's suspension and colloidal solution now what is suspension now till now we have already discussed about what what is a solution and what is a mixture it's done with all the types of solution and all so now what is a suspension now uh, this non homogeneous systems non homogeneous systems do, do, like in group c what we have done we have taken some 50 ml of water in that we have uh, just added wheat flour or chalk powder so in which the solids are dispersed are called suspensions a suspension is what a heterogeneous mixture in which the soluble particles they do not dissolve but remain suspended throughout the bulk of the medium so they are not getting dissolved they are getting suspended throughout the bulk of the medium so particles of the suspension are visible to our naked eye so what are the properties of suspension so suspension is a heterogeneous mixture and the particles of suspension can be seen by naked eye so if you are mixing a uh, chalk powder in water you will see the particles of chalk powder through your naked eye if you are um, making a solution with uh, wheat flour and water you can see the wheat particles in your naked eye so particles of suspension can be seen by the naked eye now the particles of a suspension scatter a beam of light passing through it and make its path visible so in solution we have learned that the path or beam of light is not visible now whereas in suspension they scatter a beam of light passing through it and makes its path visible now the solute particles settle down when a suspension is left behind undisturbed and that is a suspension is unstable they can be separated from the mixture by the process of filtration so by the process of filtration we can separate the solute from the solvent in case of a suspension so when the particles settle down the suspension breaks and it does not scatter light anymore so when you are uh, settling down the suspension the light doesn't pass through it doesn't scatter through the solution and there is no scattering of light there as the particles are settling down so no passing of light through the suspension then now what is a colloidal solution now the mixture obtained by group d activity so what we did in group d we have just added a few drops of milk or ink uh, in a water solution so what is happening there the particles of colloid are uniformly spread throughout the solution so due to the relatively smaller size of the particles as compared to that of a suspension the mixture appears to be homogeneous and actually a colloidal solution is a heterogeneous mixture that is milk so we have given a few drops of milk in water it's a heterogeneous solution uh, of uh, we can say that a heterogeneous mixture okay because of the small size of this colloidal particles we cannot see them with our naked eyes but these particles can easily scatter a beam of visible light so as these particles though they are not uh, seen through our visible uh, eyes but they can scatter the beam of visible light as observed in activity 2.2 now this scattering of beam of light is called what tyndall effect so this effect is called tyndall effect okay so what is tyndall effect tyndall effect is the scattering of light is called the tyndall effect so tyndall effect is what it can also be observed when a fine beam of light enters a room through a small hole 
This happens due to scattering of light by the particles of dust and smoke in the air. So this is very important and please make a note of this part that what is Tyndall effect? Tyndall effect is what? It is the scattering of a beam of light and it is named after the scientist who discovered this effect that Tyndall discovered this effect and so it is called the Tyndall effect. And it can also be observed when a fine beam of light enters a room through a small hole. So it is a uh, scattering of light by the particles of dust and smoke. Now suppose this is a torchlight. This is a solution of copper which does show the Tyndall effect and mixture of milk. Uh, it, this, this copper solution it is not showing the Tyndall effect and this is the solution of milk which shows the Tyndall effect. So path of light becomes visible. So both through both these you are passing this light here the light is not passing here it is visible. So path of light becomes visible in the uh, milk and water mixture that is in the colloidal solution it is uh, passing. So Tyndall effect is possible in this colloidal solution. Is it clear to all of you all? Now we will put a few stress on this Tyndall effect. So Tyndall effect can also be observed when sunlight passes through canopy of dense forest. So this is through a dense forest like this. The sunlight enters the forest. So this is also a Tyndall effect in forest. Mist contains tiny droplets of water which acts as particle of colloid dispersed in air. So this is what is happening in the forest. This is also an effect Tyndall effect. So what are the properties of colloid? Now a colloid is a heterogeneous mixture and the size of the particles of a colloid are too small to individually be seen through naked eye. Is it clear? So what is a colloid? A colloid is a very um, small particle. It is a heterogeneous mixture. It is too small to be individually seen with naked eyes. Now we will just um, see a few questions here. We have already discussed all the questions above. So just to see, go through the questions. And if you can, please do write in your answer book. Differentiate between homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures with examples. How are solution uh, and suspension different from each other? How are sol, solution and suspension different from each other? To make a saturated solution, 36 gram of sodium sulfate is dissolved in 100 gram of water at 293 degree Kelvin, uh, sorry, 293 degree Kelvin temperature. So find the con concentration at this temperature. So we have all discussed about this finding of concentration. Okay, so use those three formulas. Okay, so just using those three formulas which I have discussed in the previous episode, please go through it, check the three different formulas I have discussed there to find the concentration at this temperature, please do find the concentration and write it. Okay, so let us now see that some common examples of colloids are this. So dispersed phase, liquid, solid, gas, liquid, solid, gas, liquid, solid. So dispersing medium is here. Uh, you can see this medium and what is the type? Uh, so this is aerosol, type is foam, emulsion, sol, foam, gel, solid sol. Okay, so examples are this. So shaving cream is a foam, emulsion, milk and face cream are emulsion, sol is milk of magnesia and mud are sol, foam, rubber, sponge, pumic stone, they are foam, jelly, cheese, butter, they are gel, colored gemstone, milky glass, they are solid sol, and fogs, clouds and mist, they are all aerosol. Okay. So this is uh, just an example, a chart, common examples of colloids. Please do go through these examples and these are very important. In your exams also, you might get any one of these examples and you may have to write this. Okay, so just go through this. Smoke, automobile, exhaust, like all these things, just go through it. Now, now here colloids are big enough to scatter a beam. We were studying about the properties of colloids, right? So colloids are big enough to scatter the beam of light passing through it and making its path visible. They do not settle down when left undisturbed. So when you are left leaving this um, colloids undisturbed also, they are not settling down as in case of suspension. That is a colloid is quite stable. They are not unstable or suspension. They cannot be separated from a mixture by the process of filtration, but a special technique of separation is known as centrifugation. So this centrifugation in higher classes, this centrifugation process you will study in detail. So what is centrifugation? You will learn then. So this process is not filtration. It is a special mechanism 
technique of separation known as centrifugation and can be used to separate the colloidal particles. Now the components of a colloidal solution are dispersed phase and the dispersion media. The solute like component or the dispersed particle in a colloid form the dispersed phase and the component in which the dispersed phase is suspended is known as the dispersing medium. So what is the dispersing medium? So what is the dispersing medium? So dispersing medium, we can say the dispersing medium um, is the dispersed phase in which we can say that the, the component in which the dispersed phase is suspended. So the component in which the dispersed phase is suspended is called the dispersing medium. Now colloids are classified according to the state, liquid, solid and gas and of the dispersing medium and the dispersed phase. So few common examples just now I have discussed below. So this is the chart just go through it um, depending on the dispersed phase and the dispersing medium. There are different types of colloids. The type is aerosol, foam, emulsion, sol, foam, gel, solid, sol and all. And just these are the examples. Go through it, learn them on which category, which type each colloids are uh, there and what is their dispersing medium as well as their dispersed phase. Go through it and learn this because you may be getting this for your exams. So today we will be end to, uh, till now. Uh, this what we have studied in the next episode we will be coming back with physical and chemical changes and compounds and types of pure substances so still then subscribe to my channel stay tuned stay updated with all the lessons which i am posting and don't forget to write the comment in the comment box and please do subscribe to my channel to stay updated with all the videos all the lessons which i am posting thank you